another episode of The Car Girl Show. I'm here with my, I'm Janice Showers from The Car Girls. I'm here with my co-host, Jesse Kessel. Hello, happy to be Shetty. here. And we are so excited to have Jody DeVere um, on our show today, talking about the Women in Automotive Conference happening in Orlando, Florida in June. Uh, it's June 23rd, 24th, 25th. Jesse and I are going. Woo! And we're so excited. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, for joining us. Great. How, how are you this awesome. today? Good. We're amazing. We're and so very excited. excited about coming to Florida. Very excited. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a question that we get a lot, and I think it's just perception, is that people think that the Women in Automotive Conference is only for women. And when we say and people, we mean dealer, principals, sales managers, general managers, any, everyone, people in car dealers, vendors. Yeah. They think the conference is for women. They think it's for one of their women's staff to go to. Right. Which, which is true. Definitely yeah. they should, but Jody's going to talk to us about who else it's for and why. So Jody, yeah. take it away. So the, the women in automotive conference is about women. And it is for everyone. And we encourage uh, both men and women to come, uh, specifically uh, dealer principals, owners, general managers, sales managers, service managers, or executive level, uh, because the content is really about developing strategies around three basic things. One, how do we hire, retain, very important, develop, more women employees and of course develop more women leaders to how do, how can we more effectively market advertise and sell to consumer women and third how do we develop a culture and human resources best practices uh, to create a culture where we're going to really have roi around that um, so it's pretty straightforward and because of the expertise, this very specific expertise of our speakers, trainers, and educational content, I think it's imperative if uh, dealership uh, decision makers, uh, and for that matter, uh, at auto, this conference is for automakers, for the aftermarket, anyone involved in automotive, um, if they want to develop strategies around uh, those opportunities for growth, uh, they need to be at that conference. And awesome. what was that stat that you mentioned about uh, about service? service? Like, let's talk fixed operation managers, parts managers, service mm -hmm. managers. I think these people are often get overlooked. They think it's just for, for sales the sales or, department. Yeah. So listen up, fixed ops. What was that so, stat? Yeah. So NADA data uh, states that 73% of customers in the service lane are now women. And by the way, if you talk to them, they know that naturally. They'll say, oh, yeah, a lot more women. Um, interestingly, um, the percent of women working uh, it, it, you know, as service advisors, service managers is very low. And as tech, <laughs> female technicians, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> uh, one of our speakers is a panel that is recruiting more women uh, technicians um, yeah. from Ford, uh, the Tech Force Foundation, and... Um, we're going to have a speaker who has developed some strategies around that because, you know, I think when you think about the dealership world, you think just about sales, but there's a whole, uh, there's so many roles and so many, um, uh, amazing careers in automotive. And I think that for the dealer principal, for the general sales manager, when they see a more organic, uh, integrated approach, uh, and what the bottom line is that they will make more money. Um, I think this is the conference where they'll really be able to see that and get the tools to make it happen. Yeah. And that's proven, right, Jody? I mean, that's a proven fact. Companies with more women as employees, more women in management roles, right. make more money. That's not make debatable. Money. We can prove that. Yeah, It's a proven that, fact. You know, I love, fact. you know, what we're talking about, parts, body shop. Where do you find a woman in a body shop? I mean, Actually, like, you know, it's interesting because we have a contingent uh, coming and one of the companies that's been a very supportive sponsor is a company called Colors on Parade. They have over 900 franchises. They're the company that comes to the dealership to fixes the dents and dings yeah. on, you know, fleet vehicles. 
And um, they actually have developed a scholarship for women to have a franchise. It's a $5,000 scholarship. And for that matter, um, we We have developed several scholarships for women in different parts of the trade, you know, um, women technicians. uh, Oh, Jody, I think that's something we need in Canada. I don't know. Centennial Centennial College um, here in Toronto uh, does a lot of automotive programming. I actually talked to a girl who took a course at uh, Centennial um, in, uh, in automotive. And when the very first day that she was in the class, the teacher asked her, are you, are you in the wrong room? Oh, right. Gosh. Of course. Because <laughs> are you in the wrong room? She was asked cause she was the, he'd never the seen a woman, woman in his course before. Mm-hmm. So I love the scholarship. Well needed. Jesse and I have had this conversation. We have to start early with women early, early. We have right. to start mm-hmm. when they're girls. I think even- Jody, in one of our conversations, you were mentioning that it even starts you know, at, at the parents and it is. the parents uh-huh. talking about that this could be an option instead of just a doctor or a lawyer mm-hmm. or a teacher or, you know, yeah. the more common uh, professions. Yeah, even tourism and get into this and that. Right. Women don't see automotive. It's not on the radar. You know, automotive in Ontario is the second largest employer behind housing. Yeah. So, right. uh, you know, skilled skilled techs are urgently needed oh my gosh and service managers almost everyone has me, that problem service managers tell me if they have a female tech they love it she's easier on equipment um mm-hmm. they find they're i hate to make this but they're neater they're cleaner with the cars um less comebacks with female technicians that's a fact too they have uh, less comebacks they're well i and i think that this is again when we say we're on a mission, it's our responsibility to make that happen. And I do a lot of work, um, even here locally and across the country with programs that um, are developed, you know, a, a lot of women enroll in the automotive programs that are left. And in the U.S. and Canada, there, I mean, it, it, there's not that many. In fact, there's a shortage of, of young people, even men and women in the trades, period. Yeah. Because, yeah. Every, you know, the message has been go to university, go to university. Um, and so I think at this conference, uh, the uh, Tech Force Foundation has done a great job uh, in understanding these issues. And another one of our partners, Foundry 10, and really um, uh, developing the information that will help our industry know that you need to talk to parents of children in junior high. That is the decision making period, not in college. They've junior already made their college, decision yeah. of who they want to be when they grow up, at least you know, uh, what they're going to specialize in and also supporting the schools that have automotive programs. And I know a lot of dealerships do that. Um, and, and, and really internships. And as far as women techs, the, the, and this is anecdotal, but I've been around a long time. The difficulty for the female tech is she goes to school and then the dealership won't hire her because she won't fit into our culture. Yeah. I, I've heard that and before. Another, I've heard it yeah. from one woman where there wasn't even a place uh, for her to get changed. There wasn't a place for her in the, um, in the locker room. Here's the, here's the deal. Um, instead of being upset about that, we, the women need to change that by educating dealerships and providing them tools to overcome some of the, those obstacles for women to be employed. That's our job. Each of us individually, uh, instead of just fretting that these things are happening, we're doing something about it at the Women in Automotive Conference by providing the tools, the education, the resources. And, you know, I'm really excited because we've developed now five different scholarship programs. We have a mentoring that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we're aligning with all the other other women's organizations in the industry, including NADA, um, the Women in Auto Care. There will be a lot of representation, the Women in Collision, because we know that change will happen as we become more educated about, it's one thing to talk about the problem. It's another to be courageous and go back and solve the problem and provide tools, strategies. And one thing that's, I hate to say it, and it's to stick to it. You can't just try and fix a problem and if it doesn't work in 30 days, oh, it didn't work. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, it's long-term. You have to have a long-term plan and, and commit to it. Uh, where there are many men who understand the value of uh, uh, gender equity 
and not because it's the right thing to do, but because it's the profitable, profitable. thing to do. Mm -hmm. 